so um, we have a, an afternoon uh, packed of uh, presentations um, about uh, OGC, um, OGC APIs in, in particular. C can you hear me? Could you write in the chat window if you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. OK, OK, good. Uh, so as I said, we, we have lots of interesting uh, presentations uh, today um, about uh, OGC standards and in particular about uh, OGC APIs. Uh, and we, we are starting off with a presentation about OGC APIs by the Director of Product Management Standards at OGC, uh, Dr. Gobi Obonas. He has been a, one of the driving forces for the development adoption of OGC APIs. And uh, many of you may know him from the OGC API code screens or from the, the standards working groups. So uh, without further ado, I give the, the floor to you, Kobe. Thank you. OK. All right. Thank you, Joanna. Thanks for that uh, very kind introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Kobe Hobana. Uh, I work for the Open Geospatial Consortium. And for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about OGC APIs with a presentation titled OGC APIs Background, Current State, What's Next? The presentation has been uh, prepared in conjunction with my colleague, Atina Trakas. So uh, first, an introduction to the OGC. If, if you're not familiar with the OGC, um, OGC is a global consortium representing over 500 industry, government, research, and academic member organizations. We serve as a hub for thought leadership and innovation for all things related to location. We offer a neutral and trusted forum for tackling interoperability issues within and across communities. And we are seen as the go-to consensus-based standards organization for location information. Our actively engaged community stretches across commercial businesses, governmental organizations, academia, providing unique benefits to each stakeholder community. Our members include a variety of organizations that work together to create and use standards through OGC's many working groups and apply them across a variety of domains ranging from research and development to full-scale operations. Now, if you're wondering what an OGC standard is, well, an OGC standard is a document established through consensus and based and approved by the OGC membership that provides rules and guidelines aimed at optimizing the degree of interoperability within a given context. OGC develops standards and best practices, as well as other documents, um, through a consensus-based process involving the OGC membership, so more than 500 member organizations. And to develop those standards, we take into consideration community requirements, market trends, technology trends, as well as other uh, key aspects. We, we take into consideration all of those uh, aspects and design the specifications to address the interoperability uh, challenges for which those standards have been developed. What you can see on this slide is a photo taken at an OGC member meeting. The meetings are held quarterly, and this photo was taken back in March 2018. Uh, the meetings are held quarterly, and um, we typically have participation from most of our active working groups as well as other partners. So why are we developing specifications for web APIs? Why OGC API standards? Well, APIs are a very effective and very popular enabler of rapid software development. It's difficult to think of a solution in current times that does not offer a web API uh, to enable interoperability with other 
uh, with other products. Now, what we've seen with the proliferation of web APIs is that the variation in how those APIs handle location information can, to a degree, degrade interoperability. And the OGC has responded to that challenge by initiating a program of work to develop standards for web APIs. These standards are collectively known as OGC API standards, and they are designed to enhance geospatial interoperability between web APIs. We take into consideration a number of principles as we develop these standards. Some of those principles are described in the spatial data on the web best practices. The best practices were developed collaboratively um, between the OGC and the World Wide Web Consortium, also known as the W3C. The development of OGC API standards also um, takes into, we also apply a principle to make use of the open API specification. So we leverage the open API specification wherever possible. And that makes it possible to, uh, for web APIs that implement OGC API standards to be described using um, the rules described within the open API specification. So that is open API definition documents can be used to describe implementations of OGC API standards. Another key principle is that of implementer friendliness. So we've focused on the developer experience and have endeavored to ensure that OGC API standards are as usable and as developer friendly as possible. We are designing the specifications to be modular. So uh, design, the requirements are organized into building blocks uh, that make it possible to access spatial data and to integrate um, multiple building blocks into uh, single solutions. And all of the development of these web API, of these OGC API standards has been done in the pub public while um, while developing the specifications in public GitHub repositories, encouraging both members and non-members to participate in the standards development uh, process. So what are those OGC API standards? Starting from the top left and working our way down, um, we've got OGC API discrete global grid systems, which specifies an interface for accessing data and other resources that are organized in discrete global grid systems. We also have OGC API records, which specifies an interface for accessing catalogs of metadata. OGC API maps, which specifies an interface for accessing electronic rendered maps and charts. OGC API styles, which specifies an interface for accessing styles and symbology and similar portrayal information. OGC API tiles, which specifies an interface for accessing tiled resources, such as map tiles and tiled feature data, also known as vector tiles. OGC API common, which specifies the foundation requirements on which other OGC API specifications are, are built. OGC API routes, which specifies an interface for access and routing information, such as is used for transporta transportation planning. OGC API environmental data retrieval, which specifies an interface for accessing environmental data resources and other forms of spatial temporal data, such as trajectories and corridors. OGC API features, which specifies an interface for accessing vector feature data. OGC API processes, which specifies an interface for accessing implementations of algorithms that handle geospatial data or produce geospatial data. OGC API coverages, which specifies an interface for accessing coverage data, such as satellite imagery and other forms, and some forms of meteorological data uh, as well. Now, out of these specifications that you see on the slide, only OGC API features, OGC API processes, and OGC API environmental data retrieval have been approved. Um, with OGC API features, both uh, part one and part two have been approved. Part one specifies the core requirements. 
Um, and uh, part two suffice an extension for handling uh, any type of coordinate reference system. We are continuing to work, to work on these OGC API standards. So over the next um, uh, series of months, you will see several more OGC API standards announced as completed. As well as publishing the standards documents, we are also developing and making available executable test suites to enable developers to test whether their products are compliant to the standards. And what you can see on this slide are examples of two OSGO projects uh, that have products certified as OGC compliant. Uh, in this case, that's PyG API and Degree. Um, all products that are certified as uh, OGC compliant are listed on the OGC product database and they receive a compliance badge such as is shown on this slide. And to get a product certified as OGC compliant, it's a five-step process. First, that product is tested using the OGC validator. The organization um, responsible for that product then submits the product for certification. OGC staff um, review the, uh, the application um, and then a certification um, um, mark is issued. Uh, and finally, that product is listed on the product database. So it's a very simple five-step process. Um, that organizations go through to get their product certified as OGC compliant. And we're seeing significant impact of OGC API standards across the globe. For instance, the International Organization for Standardization, also known as ISO, has, uh, has published ISO 19168-1, which is based on OGC API features part one. Uh, and also the Inspire community has published a good practice uh, for, uh, for download services that is based on OGC API features. So we're seeing impact in several different communities across the globe, um, impact of OGC API standards. To encourage and facilitate the implementation of OGC API standards, we've Develop, we've made available a website uh, on which various resources such as the such as links to the specifications, information about code sprints, uh, videos, and other information can be accessed. So ogcapi.ogc.org, I'd encourage you to visit the website. As I mentioned earlier, uh, a variety of information is available on GitHub repositories. Um, on those repositories, you'll find an issues board uh, on which um, various discussions take place, including questions. So if you have questions uh, about the specifications, feel free to, uh, to ask the standards working groups through the, um, through the issues boards on those GitHub repositories. We've also made available uh, example open API definition documents that illustrate how you can implement um, the OGC API standards, and you'll find links to those open API definition documents on the ogcapi.ogc.org website. Since the development of these um, standards began, we've seen a variety of deployment models. Uh, one of those models is, involves integration of implementations of various OGC API standards into single solutions, such as is illustrated on this slide. But we've also seen implementation of the <clears throat> implementations of the OGC API standards as microservices. We've seen some um, solutions adopt uh, this uh, microservices-oriented architecture using uh, OGC APIs within, uh, within containers, for instance, implementing them within containers uh, such as Docker, Kubernetes, and uh, similar. And to facilitate the development uh, and prototyping of the OGC API standards, we run various innovation initiatives such as testbits, pilots, plugfests, research projects, interoperability experiments, sprints, and hackathons. 
An example of a previous code sprint is a joint, is the 2021 joint OGC, OSG, or ASF code sprint, which was held back in February. The code sprint was organized and hosted by OGC, the Open Source Geospatial Foundation, as well as the Apache Software Foundation. And it served to accelerate the implementation of various OGC standards across the developer community. So not just the open source uh, software community, uh, but also uh, others as well from the, uh, from the commercial space. The joint code sprint was sponsored by Ordnance Survey and GeoCAT, uh, as well as several organizations that support OSGEO. An illustration, a high level overview of the architecture that was implemented in that code sprint is shown on this slide. And you can see uh, quite a number of OSGO projects. Um, for instance, GeoServer, uh, QGIS, PyCSW, and others. You can see many of those pro uh, projects took part uh, in the code sprint. Uh, but also quite a number of Apache Software Foundation pro projects, for instance, Fuseki, uh, which is part of uh, Jena, uh, Kafka, ActiveMQ, they took part in the code sprint, uh, as well as other open source projects such as LD Proxy. So it was great to see all of these uh, you know, projects come together within the same environment for three days and work on, uh, you know, on implementing various open geospatial standards. In the, on the middle of this uh, slide, you also see the web API um, standards that were implemented, the OGC API standards, OGC API features, OGC API maps, OGC API coverages, processes, tiles, EDR records, and styles. So it was a very large um, code sprint in terms of the variety of standards that were implemented. So we are continuing to run code sprints. The next OGC API virtual code sprint is going to be uh, next month in October, running October 26th to the 28th. It will focus on three specifications, OGC API routes, OGC API discrete global grid systems, and OGC API common. And the code sprint will serve to advance the development of those draft specifications. And we'll also have the Testbed 17 API exper uh, ex uh, experiments uh, participants, uh, sorry, API experiments thread participants take part. They will be uh, telling us about some of the experiments and inviting uh, the various code sprint participants to to take part in the work. So it's going to be a very exciting e event indeed. Then in November, we'll run a code sprint focusing on OGC API features and ISO 19168-1. Um, that code sprint will provide a platform for us to uh, try out various developer resources. It will be led by Dr. Joanna Simos, uh, developer relations uh, lead, and um, look out for an announcement about the date for that uh, code sprint. So if you're wondering you know, which open source projects, which OSGO projects are, uh, have implementations of OGC API standards, we've got a slide here. Uh, I suspect that I might have missed some implementations, so apologies if I've missed your project. Um, but you can see you know, that quite a lot of for, uh, open source uh, projects are implementing OGC API standards. Um, and therefore, there's quite a lot of resource that you can have a look at and use as a reference for your own open source projects. So in summary, OGC API standards are becoming a key requirement for web APIs offering location referenced information. We are seeing implementations across various open source as well as commercial and proprietary uh, products. We're seeing implementations across the globe quite literally. And early impact is, <clears throat> is being, uh, early impact is being noted 
uh, across government, private, uh, private and academic sectors, whether it's the Inspire community or whether it's uh, other geospatial data policies um, in North America uh, and spatial data infrastructure, we're seeing quite a lot of programs implement uh, and require OGC API, uh, API standards to be implemented. So our advice to organizations is that they should start planning now for how they're going to specially enable their web APIs through OGC API standards. And for open source projects, we're encouraging <clears throat> you to implement OGC API standards in your, uh, in your software products and reach out, let us know if you have any questions about how we can facilitate your implementations of OGC API standards. And that's it, thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much, uh, Gobi. And this is great, you just finished uh, before, uh, before the scheduled time, which gives us some extra time for, uh, for questions. And we, we do have a lot of questions, so uh, maybe I, I, I go over them in, uh, by order. So the first one is, what is the difference between OGC APIs and web services like WMS, WFS, SOS, etc. Okay, <clears throat> so with the you know with the previous generation of uh, OGC uh, standards, we had OGC web services such as WMS, WFS, and others, and they uh, implemented an approach that was based on uh, OWS Common, Web Services Common. Um, what we are doing with OGC API standards is that we're uh, designing the standards to uh, to take well to implement some of the contemporary and modern uh, web uh, architecture approaches. So, for instance, the use of several IETF uh, standards, uh, the use of um, content negotiation approaches, uh, the use of uh, the open API specification, it, many of those um, contemporary approaches are being included and uh, are being in, uh, adopted by OGC API standards. So the interfaces are completely different from those of um, you know, uh, classic uh, OGC web service standards. And for a time, you will, you will continue to see OGC web service uh, standards such as WMS and WF. FS, you will continue to see them, um, but in the meantime, what we're doing, we're encouraging uh, software vendors, software developers to implement OGC API standards um, alongside the implementations of OGC web service standards. Okay, thank you. So the, the other question was, uh, it starts with an apology. Sorry if this is addressed layer in the talk. Is there a true not 2.5D OGC API for 3D GU? Well, we are just about to begin a new um, activity to develop the um, the OGC a o API for geo volumes for 3D geo volumes. Um, that API will offer uh, access to uh, 3D visualizations, um, and much of the work was uh, has actually been prototyped in a previous uh, OGC innovations project. So you'll you'll find some information about that on the OGC website. Um, so look out for that announcement. The standards working group hopefully will uh, will be active within the next few weeks. It's going to work on an OGC API um, uh, specification for uh, for for accessing 3D, uh, you know, 3D vi visualizations. Oh, okay, thank you. So the next question is: Is or will be a UMN Map Server also certified for OGC API features? Uh, well, I so I'm not involved in the Map Server uh, project. Um, However, um, what I can say is we're currently encouraging all uh, software projects uh, to, to explore uh, and look to certify as being combined. Now, of course, 
So that means that somebody has to fund the certification of those projects. So if you're a supporter of uh, Map Server, uh, I'd encourage you to get in contact with the developers of that uh, um, project and offer to support them or, or even fund the submission for compliance certification. Thank you. Uh, the next question is also about software. Uh, are those software OGC API software libraries available for Python? Uh, yes, the, there are quite uh, a number of open source. In fact, let me start off by saying um, PyGeo API is um, it's a Python-based uh, software product that supports quite a number of OGC API standards, including both approved ones and uh, and others that are still in draft form. Uh, PyCSW also be implemented using Python and it supports a number of OGC API um, specifications. Um, now, I think there might be some GDAL wrappers as, as well, that um, some Python-based GDAL wrappers as well. So uh, I probably cannot name them all, but the short answer is yes, there are some Python uh, libraries available to, uh, you know, to, for implementing OGC API standards. And uh, the next question I really love, the next question is, what people do during the virtual code sprints? Test APIs, use the APIs for their own developments? Okay, yeah, um, so they do a lot of exciting stuff. I mean, a lot of exciting stuff. Um, so what they tend to do is to bring uh, either bring their own implementations of the APIs, and typically those implementations are the, perhaps at uh, prototype stage, so alpha, beta stage, and they use the code sprints as an opportunity to refine and improve, improve their implementations. Uh, even if their implementations are at production stage, they um, use the code sprints as an, opportunity, as an opportunity to implement additional capabilities and it's really a, you know, a, a collaborative uh, environment. So you tend to find um, participants um, you know, share observations or you know, they'll encounter a bug and notify the, the, the maintainer of the software products. And some of them will even volunteer to help fix the bugs. Um, you know, so it's, it's always an exciting um, experience. And then uh, we also tend to have a final demonstration on, on day three of the code sprint where the participants get to show off and, uh, and showcase their, their implementations. And that's always a, a good opportunity for sponsors and, uh, and government agencies, for instance, to have a look and see what, um, you know, what's possible using those OGC API uh, standards and also those software libraries as well. So it's a really exciting uh, event to take part in. Uh, okay, Govi, I will ask you an extra effort to uh, answer the the next questions very quickly because we, we don't have a lot of time, but I would love okay. to, to hear your answers. So the one is, are OGC APIs difficult to implement in home microservices? I'm not sure there's a short question for this. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I will obviously say that very that, simple. Yeah, they're very simple to implement. But let me give you some statistics. I have seen in a code sprint, one of the developers, uh, one of the participants take an open API definition document for OGC API processes. And within two hours, he had a, a working implementation. I have seen that happen. And I've seen several other examples of, for instance, OGC API features implemented within a, a few hours. So they are very simple to, uh, to to implement, very capable and very easy to implement. Okay, thank you. And the, and the last question, what do you think will be the biggest driver of mass adoption? I, I guess for the OGC APIs. Yeah, uh, I, I believe it will be a case of getting the, um, you know, the wider community to serve Data sets. So the more data sets, authoritative and um, you know cross source data sets we actually get out into the public, I think the the better we'll be able to get more end users, more stakeholders to uh, you know to 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 acknowledge and recognize the importance of this 
uh, of this moment uh, of having OGC APIs uh, enter the marketplace. So I, I think that will be it, you know, getting all those data sets out there uh, through implementations of OGC APIs.